I'm restarting this podcast episode. No, the video. Number three. Did you see at GE Customs? On no, as you can see at Half Hour with Half Sack on YouTube. <laughs> After he takes it from GE yes. Customs face. <laughs> Just send it right over. I'll, I'll put you as an administrator. No, I better not. Stuff that you would put on there. I'll give him a title. You know what he's going to start. <laughs> You're still on probation. <laughs> yeah, he was complaining about the past two hours of me not call hosting properly, and then the last hour, he starts writing a bunch of shit down. 144. <laughs> so I, I'm trying to talk a little bit more this hour. Yeah, but the language you, you speak as you're talking, I think... It may not be suitable for all listeners. So, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, JT, I, I'd like to uh, hear some more of these uh, stories from uh, from your uh, your and Butch's experience at the uh, the barn or other places that uh, you and Butch have been involved in. Well, we've been involved in some stuff. I mean, we've had to, we're, we're musicians and we've been known to uh, imbibe once in a while in our favorite libations. <laughs> yeah, I like guess. Yeah, there's a there's been a few times down there at the barn. And one night I was down there and I was, had a few. I don't know if I was drinking appletinis that night. I might have been on. I might have been an all liquor kick that night. And uh, JT's drink of choice, appletini. Yeah, appletini is my drink of choice. Google it. And uh, without the umbrellas, shaken, not stirred. Uh, but. Uh, we was down there one night, and I decided, I don't know if Butch was there or not, I decided to hang upside down from the rafters by my legs, and everybody said I was going to take out a hip, but I decided to hang upside down from the rafters and play, and uh, it got pretty crazy. We've had some real good times down there. Butch, you got any, any stories or experiences? Exactly. I'll let JT tell you this because I don't remember much about it. <laughs> but I was up there one night and hadn't drank in a while. Stood up from behind the drum. That's pretty much all I remember. <laughs> JT will fill you in on the rest of that. <laughs> uh, he was, we was drinking. We was, it was going good too. We was rolling that night. And Butch gets... Every once in a while, you'd hear him holler out, just do it! And man, he'd get to going on them drums, and it was sounding good. Man, he's beating them drums, and I'm <laughs> wailing on his guitar, man. Robert was up. We was even playing Ted Nugent Stranglehold, and we got a guy on cello that's doing Ted Nugent on cello. We're rocking. And man, he was like, do it, dog! And he was beating them, and he's beating them drums. Man, we got done, and he got up. And when he got up, he stood up. And when he stood up, he went over, and the drums all went over the floor. He gashed up his nose, tore up, I mean, just flat tore his face leg up. <laughs> we had to bring him home. <laughs> we brought him in the door. It looked like he'd been in a war, man. I looked at Sheriff, oh my God. <laughs> it was a mess, man. I thought that was just an initiation into the band. Yeah. <laughs> well, we was playing basketball, Sharon. No, I wasn't going to work. <laughs> all, all of us too drunk to drive. I was like, who's going to drive him down there? Well, I ain't driving. I can't drive. I can't drive either. Oh, well. It was like, well, the hell. I couldn't even it? stand up, so I didn't have no one going to drive. So it was, it was more or less like, well. None of us can drive. I guess we'll all just take one for the gift or we'll all go to jail. Come on, we're all getting in the car. We're all taking him home. So we brought him home. Oh, it was a night. It was a night. So what's uh, what usually happens up there at the bar? Y'all get started about six or seven and just kind of mosey into a <laughs> set? Or do yeah, y'all just kind of tinker just, around for a while? Well, we do for a little while. I mean, you never know what's going to go on at the barn. 
it starts out, it usually starts out during the summer, it's a Saturday afternoon, you start out, and there'll be some kind of mechanic work going on or something, and then there's welding, and there's painting, I mean, the girls paint, and they make pretty things, and home crafts, and all this stuff. And play then, darts. Play darts, you know, I mean, it's just, whatever, whatever you want to do, let's do. And then the apple teenies and the beer gets flowing and it's like, okay guys, let's play some music. We break it out. And then if the welding still needs to go on, you know, you might play a few songs, be like, okay, I gotta go over and finish welding that piece. And it's, it's just unreal. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like, drop this, do this, come back, play music. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty wild. It's, it's just a good time all around. Yeah, That's what it sounds like. Yeah, it's, it, it's pretty cool. You know, I'm, and there have been times, I mean, the girls would be doing something, I'd be like, hey man, let me try that. Hey, check this out. You know, it, it's just, it's just trippy. It really is. Now, where, how did y'all start up playing at the barn? I mean, did you, you knew Butch. How, well, how, did, how did the whole group get together? Well, I was living, I took a hiatus from it all. I was living down in Hudson, Kentucky for about, I lived down there, at that time I'd been down there for about four years. I hadn't even picked up a guitar. Didn't even own one. And uh, just took a hiatus from everything. And uh, But uh, Andrew, the guy who, worked, who owns the barn, uh, his uh, uncle played in a band with me and played cello. He was doing sneezy listening stuff, restaurants, mm -hmm. dinner clubs, stuff like that. And uh, oh, I'm sorry, I just don't see you in like a Tuxedo band. Oh, it wasn't. I, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't a tuxedo band, but it was easy listening uh -huh. stuff. It's pretty, it pretty cool. And uh, we was taking rock and roll songs and, 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 and speeding them way down, dropping speed on them way down, and playing where they're a little bit more sultry, a little bit more sensual. <laughs> yeah, sort of. Sort of. I mean, you know. And it was pretty cool. It was working. It sounded good. It was a pretty neat thing. Big yeah, ass angel listen. bees everywhere. <laughs> easy listening uh, music. And uh, then, uh, he, from being down in the country and not doing anything, he called me up. He said, "Man, he said, you want to play some music this weekend?" And I was like, "Yeah." That's where at. He said, "Down in Pekin." He said, "I'll come down and get you." I said, "All right." So he come down and got me, and uh, I walked in the garage. At about 1.30 on a Saturday afternoon. And I see all these young guys. Now all these guys are way way younger than me and Butch. Mm -hmm. And they're into playing every aspect of it they can play. They right. Care. And uh, I walked in the garage at 1.30 in the afternoon. And uh, I didn't come from behind the guitar until about 4.30 in the morning. Is that right? And wow. we, we played and played and played. We ate, we drank, and I had a ball. Seven o'clock next morning. It's on Sunday morning. Robert gets me up. He said, "We're going to do some recording work. Come on." Okay, let's go. So we're all still drunk, still hungover, whatever. Some of them had not went to bed yet, and we went out and did a little recording work just to kind of just sift through some stuff. That way we would have something to revert back to. What songs that was played, you know. That way we got it on a disc. We can get yeah, recorded. Got to go, go back to it, you know. And uh, Andrew said, I need a bass guitar. And uh, I was like, well, I can probably get you one. So I handed me some money. He said, go get us a bass guitar. I said, okay. So when I got a bass guitar, he called up. And he said, we need a bass amp, too. I said, okay. So on a Sunday, we found a bass guitar and a bass amp. Came back to the barn and played all night again. And then uh, Monday afternoon, I went home and I said, I'll be back. And after that, it was generally about once, twice a month, they come out and get me. I'd come up and finally Sammy said to me, he said, man, he said, why don't you move up here? He said, stay with me to get a job. He said, Andrew, you got your car? He said, let's do this. He said, there's nothing else. He said, well, have fun. Said, let's do it. Right. So that's been it. And when I got back up here, when I got back up here, I called Butch. Matter of fact, I called Butch after a couple times being down at the barn. I said, man, you got to check this out. I said, these young cats, and they're playing. I said, they're chomping at the bit. And he said, okay. 
So we stepped in there and started jamming with them. It all started pulling together real quick. Got good. The rest is history. The rest is history. History in the making. I'm sorry, listeners. Rick has the phone now. And he has to. Well, Philip was doing the video for YouTube, and he had to take off for a second. So now I'm videoing. So. Oh, I'm he's just back. Giving people a little view of what big ass anal beads looks like on the computer screen, and then what it looks like when he writes it down. There's Philip. Oh. Philip, won't you take the listeners in there and show them the drones and the pictures? Yeah, kind of give a tour around. Do I have to speak? Oh my god. <laughs> no, but this is Do I uh, have to speak? filmed in the remote location of Butch's house. Why are you so shy of speaking on a microphone? What he fails to realize is everything's being on the phone. Yeah, well, he's just being out of the way that you know, I have to speak. And there's pictures on there, so people that come watch these, you will just going to say, well, this is a silly kid here. You know? You got a couple of apple teenies, you might get out of that and hit the train. That'll help. That'll help. A couple of trips to the farm to get back. What's your experience with the farm? You got up there and say, uh, we've been in touch back and forth. And I knew we'd be called me. Yeah, you know, right past yeah. each other, not even know. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's been times we talk about going. A lot of different stuff. They're like, oh yeah, man, that was so and so. And I tell you something else happened to that. I'm like, yeah, man, I was standing right there when that happened too. And so we've been we've been right there within arms reach one another. So it's been cool. It's been a fun ride. We've had we've had fun together for what forty years and ain't <laughs> haven't known each other but about ten. And you should live in the same neighborhood. Yeah, you used to live in the same area. Is that right? Yeah. So all this was just destined to be. Evidently. Yeah. 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 Just the timing presented itself, and, and here we are. It's like, okay, you, okay, it's like God said, okay, you two morons made it through. <laughs> you two morons. <laughs> so I'm going to let you all meet. <laughs> and y'all be real careful, because remember, I can take this away from you. <laughs> that two morons. Like that. Well, I want to tell you, I feel honored, you know, to be doing this as well as it's been a total honor. I mean, not just because of the project or whatever, but hooking up, finally hooking up with JT. I feel the same way about him. Playing music. I mean, it's just... Like I said, I'm you know JT knows it. You know I'll play music with him until I die. You know, and hopefully when that time comes, I'll be sitting at the drums. Well, it, it sounds good that you both have a, a respect for each other, and and the music has brought you all together. Yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. <coughs> Definitely. Music brings a lot of things together. I used to go out. A buddy of mine teaches, over in Floyd County. He works with uh, uh, special needs kids. And we used to go in once a month, me and him, and a couple other people from a folk group I was bumming around with, we were doing some stuff. And we'd go in and play for these kids. And there was, you know, Puff the Magic Dragon, Dora the Explorer, whatever, you know. And things these kids could associate to. They were special needs kids, and of all types, from Autistic, and crippled, uh, wheelchairs, uh, bad speech impediments, slow learners. I mean, they were all right there. And uh, so we we go in and play things once a month. And one day we kind of run out some songs. We kind of zapping through things and kind of kids and everything else. They said, "Man," he said, "We got an extra thirty minutes here." He said, "Man, what do you want to do?" I said, "I don't know." I said, "Let's do some folk music." <coughs> He said, okay, well, Teresa, the one girl that sang with us, she said, let's do Let It Be. And this was amazing to me. So I was like, okay, we'll do Let It Be. Well, I had my, I had a line six, acoustic variation, a foot pedal, where I could get orchestras and everything else. So 
So I'm immediately I start clicking switches. Let's free this up, you know. And all these kids, and these are little kids. We start playing that B, and the next thing you know, they got their arms around one another, and they're swinging back and forth to music, and they're singing the words. And I was like, man, this is way cool. And I played for in front of 10, 20,000 people. And I was thinking, this is probably the coolest thing I've ever seen in well, my it's, life. It's the power of music. That's that's it. It's, 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 music has no boundaries. It soothes it, all. It, it, it's, it, they, it's soothing. They say music calms a savage beast. I think it drives the bestiality of pe out of people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, we're all coming together and we're going to do this. And it's just, it's just really cool. But I thought that was the neatest thing I ever seen in my life. These kids swaying back and forth. I was like, my God, we got a commune up in here. Mm -hmm. So what do you say, Butch? Howdy. <laughs> Love, the expression. Love the expression. Well, I got to say, in, in the short time that we've been here, and I've actually got to meet JT and talk to him, He's actually a very deep person and a deep thinker. A lot of wisdom. It's a front. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let him lie to you. Greg, is this your first time meeting JT? Yes, it is. And all the women out there want me. So now that I'm on video, here, let me show y'all. Here, girls. This is my good side. <laughs> This too is my good side. <laughs> so look what you're getting, baby. That's good side number two. Not bad from any angle. No. Right. And this is my good side. <laughs> You'll have to see the video to see that. Because <laughs> I'm not going to describe this. Yeah, where Butch is grabbing his crotch. <laughs> I, I kept it clean. I said crotch. At least he didn't say penis. <laughs> you know the mic does pick you up. Mm -hmm. That's why I said it, so you had to write it down. Yeah, and you know that will be on YouTube. Okay, just making sure. Along with this picture. Yeah. yeah. And big ass ain't on me. <laughs> <laughs> Hour three. I, you know, I am so glad that I am the host, the producer, the editor of this program. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to. We, uh, the close -up. we need to get a sponsor. I mean, we seriously do. We need to get a sponsor to help bring some money in, so we can take this show out on the road and do a little bit more, get some better equipment, and you know, not big ass anal beads. You can go ahead and edit that out with one of your little horns. Is that what you want a horn? By the way, y'all seem like a bunch of educated men up in here. Does this look like venereal horns to you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great. <laughs> no, it, would, it would be good to get a sponsor. Uh, you know, just the show so far is... What started off in my head was a half-hour show. It's a month. That never happened. Has turned into a hour show. Three. Just well, this is episode three, but an hour show for each, <coughs> each one that I've done, and so far we're doing one almost every week. Just call it the weekly show with half sack. I'm not changing the name. <laughs> I like the name that I gave it because I can do that. In all seriousness, if somebody wants to sponsor the show, we will make sure to plug you in every episode. At yeah, least once every episode, if not two or three times more. And if it's a lady out there, remember girls... We would be more than happy to plug you. I mean, plug <laughs> into you. Or plug you in. Yeah. Are you really going to edit that out? Just that one part. Oh. The second part, third part, I'm going to... You know, he's going to run it all your memory on that phone. Yeah, I know. Videotape. So. Well, here before. A full picture of the whole drum set. He, he's pulling out a picture of his drum set. And because this is audio, you can't see it. But if you want to go to Half Fire with Half Sack, uh, that would be my YouTube channel, you can see the picture. Or see it first. And well, in like fact, he went customers. over there. He, I'll edit that part out. <laughs> Just because I can. But Phil did go over there and show him the, the set earlier in that video. Mm -hmm. Now, that would have been a much better video. Yes. That with him actually at the drums. 
Yeah, we might have to. We might have to do that. At least mic cords will reach over there. Yeah, and you could just pop out a little tune. I don't need a mic cord to sit down. That's <laughs> <what I'm doing>. <laughs> <laughs> We right. might not the need to take them. Right. Might not, might not, in this room, we might not need to take these microphones nowhere. It's probably yeah. going to look like crazy. It's, it's pretty loud. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, a sponsor would be good. Uh, we can get a bigger mixer and plug in more mics, buy more mics, buy better equipment, like you said. So if you'd like to sponsor the show, you can email me at half hour with half sack at gmail.com. That is spelled out. Or you can call. 502-709-8620. That is a voice service, so uh, if you do not want your voice played over the air, then make sure you specify that. Or if, see, or guys, that's how y'all plug a show. Or if Clear Channel Radio wants to come in and maybe buy in on this thing, yeah, sure, we'll talk to you. Yeah, we don't care. Oh, yeah, we gladly talk to Clear Channel Radio. Yeah, they, they're pretty big around here. But, um, you know... Uh, I've really enjoyed and, and very thankful that both you and uh, JT and Butch are on the show. Um, you know, we need to thank Butch for uh, inviting us out here and letting us set up shop in his house. Yeah. Please don't tell my mother that I'm a musician. She thinks I'm a piano player in a whore house. She's quite <laughs> proud of me. And now the pause for Chuck to write down his number. I can say cat house. You can say that, but I don't think that's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> that's why there's going to be a little bell from the, uh, you know, from the front desk. Ding. Now, are we almost 30 minutes in? We are. We are 25 minutes. Oh, so it's almost an actual half hour with half side. But we ain't stopping yet, are we? I didn't see anybody put the brakes on. I'm still I've had a lot of women tell me that. Don't stop. <laughs> don't even write it, because there's but, nothing to write. No, right. I didn't. I didn't. He picked up his pen. Well, I just wanted to sincerely thank JT and Butch for, you know, having us up here, being on the show, uh, you know, the, the stories that uh, that we've heard off air for good reason off air. But uh, now, if you want to hear more from Butch or JT or if you have any questions for him or anything like that, feel free to contact us. If you want to know more about the band, uh, any future uh, dates that they might have on uh, upcoming gigs that might be playing or anything. Oh, I'll, I'll be sure to plug them. I'll plug them like crazy. You know, contact us uh, at the email address or at the phone number. Which are? Half hour with half sack at gmail.com or 502 709 8620. I think this is the only reason why he has me here. That's yeah, a, that's it, a good it really call is. He has me here just so I can plug him. Right, you don't get paid for nothing. Or if y'all want to come up and get in a hot tub, we're getting ready to, matter of fact, we're getting ready to install a high dive. <laughs> <laughs> right Admission is an apple martini. Yeah. <laughs> you get a complimentary apple martini, man. You got membership in the hot tub. <laughs> Can't stop at just one. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Well, anybody else got any more stories? Or uh, we're going to just wrap this up? I got plenty of stories, but they <laughs> they, they can't be, be cleaned up enough. I can't know if I can clean them up enough or not. Can what? we? Huh? Can we end this with the guitar? Well, it's up to JT. Or hey, how about we end it with the uh, drums? Drums. Yeah. So. So. I mean, I can I can I can bring the volume down. I, can, I don't know if I can bring the volume down. <laughs> <laughs> down. <laughs> A thousand times there, but show them what they think to do. Triangle. I did a triangle.